This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, I'm now going to go through chapter 23 of the free lecture notes, which is still looking at the consolidated statement of financial position. But whereas in the lectures on the previous chapter, uh, P always owned 100% uh, of the subsidiary, we now need to look at the situation where uh, P owns, the parent owns less than 100%, but still controls. And I did say that the um, most likely reason for controlling the other company is owning more than 50%. And so we're going to look at a couple of examples. First of all, have a look at example one with me. On the 1st of January 2008, P acquired 80% of the ordinary shares of S, which was incorporated on that date. So they only own 80%, but it's, they own more than half the shares. They do control S. They can decide what S does, you know, because they hold the, most of the votes. Uh, and if you look at the statements, the statements exactly as normal, but in P statement is investment in S at cost. They paid 8,000. So, first of all, let's do our normal little bit of workings to see if there's any goodwill. Now here, watch very carefully. To see if there's any goodwill, we want to look at the value that was placed on S as compared with the value of the assets. So the value of S At the date the shares were bought, what's the total value? Well, we know what the cost of P's investment was. You can find it from P's statement. The investment in asset cost was 8,000. But this time, that wasn't the whole value being placed on S. That's only the value of 80% of S. Uh, S was worth more. Because there's the other 20% as well. Well, the other 20% we call the non-controlling interest. P's 80% controls, but the other 20% there are other people involved that don't control. And so we, to get the full value, we need to bring in what we call the fair value of the non-controlling interest. So P's investment, that was for 80%. This non-controlling interest in the company is the remaining 20%. Now, um, in the exam, almost certainly you'll be told how much the other 20% were worth uh, at the date P bought its shares, January 2008. Here we're not told how much the 20% were worth and so we assume that if 80% were worth 8,000, 20%, well, we just take a proportion. We say they must be worth 20 80ths of 8,000. They must have been worth 2,000. So if 80% is 8,000, 1% is 8,000 divided by 80, 20% is 20 times that, 20 80ths. Uh, now, again, you'll almost certainly be told the value of it. Here we weren't told, so we have no choice but to do what I've done there. So it means the total value being placed on S was 10,000. We need to check if there was any goodwill. Well, exactly the same procedure as before. Uh, what we're valuing is the share capital of S.
Every message statement, it's 10,000. In addition, we're buying any pre-acquisition retained earnings. Uh, and here, uh, there are none, because if you look at the first sentence, um, on 1st of January 2008, that's when P bought its shares, S was incorporated on that date. And so they've not been earning anything, but if they had, if it had been bought at a later date, as you'll see in the next example, we bring in these pre-acquisition retained earnings. The other thing, remember, you're looking for is this fair value adjustment. If we thought the assets are worth more than the carrying value, well, there's no mention of any fair value adjustment here. Uh, and there wouldn't be, because it was bought on incorporation. There's always why there should be. And so we're valuing the company at 10,000. Its carrying value was 10,000. Here, a nice easy one in this respect, the goodwill is zero. So I want to build it up. There could have been goodwill in the next example, there will be. Now let's go through and do the consolidated statement of financial position. And watch me carefully here. First of all, non-current assets. Just as before, uh, we're treating it as one big company. We simply add together 30,000 in P, 15,000 in S. There's no fair value adjustment here. If there was, it would be added on. The total, 45,000. Not here, but in general, you have this new asset appearing, the goodwill arising on consolidation. Uh, but here there isn't, it's zero, we wouldn't even bother showing it. Current assets, we add up. Seven in P, six in S, 13. So the total, what is it? 58,000. Uh, equity and liabilities, share capital, always the share capital of the parent company, uh, are a P shareholders own P and control S, so share capital 25,000. Uh, retained earnings. Uh, the retained earnings, that everything in P, 15,000. But as far as S is concerned, two things. One, you already know, it's the post-acquisition retained earnings. And here, of course, uh, because the shares were acquired on the date of incorporation, here, all the earnings, the 8,000, are post-acquisition. However, this time, P shareholders don't own all those earnings because we only own 80%. And so we bring in our share, 80% of the post-acquisition retained earnings. 80% of 8,000 is 6,400. The total, 21,400. And so a total there, I'll do a subtotal, of 46,400. Now I'm going to leave a space for a minute, because there's something else we're going to bring in. But of course, current liabilities, 
we simply add a Five plus three, eight thousand. However, of course, it's not going to add up. And why isn't it going to add up? Uh, because P shareholders, they own only 80% of the company. We brought in all the assets, all the liabilities, but they're not all owned by P. Some of it's owned by this other 20%. And so we have to show separately how much of the, this big company is owned by the other 20% or the non-controlling interest. And how much belongs to them? How much are they owed? Well, we said earlier that the fair value of the non-controlling interest when P originally bought the shares was 2,000. When P bought the shares, they paid eight for their 80%. The other 20% were worth 2,000. The fair value, 2,000. But that was several years ago. That was in 2008. Since then, uh, S has been uh, earning money. And only 80% of uh, their earnings belong uh, to P shareholders. The other 20% belong to the shareholders in uh, the non-controlling interest. And so the retained earnings I've not left myself enough space. They own non-controlling interest on 20%. The earnings since acquisition were 8,000. And so the non-controlling interest is the 2,000 they were worth <coughs> when P bought their holding, plus their share, the non-controlling interest share, of the earnings since acquisition, the total 3,600. Now I can bring in again the current liabilities. Uh, five in P, three in S, a total of 8,000. And the total, uh, 49, 50, 58,000. All right, now, you need time to think about it, so I'm going to stop this lecture here, but in the next lecture, we'll go through uh, one more example, but virtually everything in it, uh, as far as calculating goodwill, retained earnings, and this non-controlling interest.